In the last few years, the number of migrant ships which have capsized has increased. Hundreds of nameless men, women, and children have gone missing or drowned in the Mediterranean Sea. Why has this become so common and why are these lives so easily forsaken and forgotten? These are the questions Matteo Garon explores in his classic Io Capitano, which translates into I am the captain. Briefly, the film follows Seydou and Musa, cousins who embark on an epic journey from West Africa to Europe in hopes of a better life. It is a stunning film that is careful not to exploit its characters or glorify the subject matter. It also attempts to give audiences an idea of what a migrant is, harmless men, women, and children being taken advantage of by criminals trying to get rich. Currently, there is no internationally recognized definition for a migrant. Just, to, just so there is no confusion, a refugee is a person who has fled their own country because they are at risk of serious human rights violations and persecution. An asylum seeker is also at risk of human rights abuses and persecution. However, they're awaiting to gain refugee status. Migrants, on the other hand, occupy this gray space. Although they don't fit the legal definition of a refugee, going back to their home country may still result in their death. Migrants flee their country for a number of reasons. Some are at risk, some are looking for work, and others might just be looking to reunite with family. Regardless of their reasons for fleeing, migrants, unlike refugees and asylum seekers, are, are not actually protected under international law and therefore stripped of their human rights by these countries that they're fleeing to. Many countries, unfortunately, discourage migrants by either delaying assistance or leaving them stranded out to sea. A cruelty that nearly kills Musa and Seydo on their way to Italy. When we first meet Musa and Seydo, they are two idealists who really want better for themselves. They dream of stardom, they dream of riches. The film takes some time at the start to really emphasize that Musa and Seydo were seduced by an idea. They come from loving families and aside from material wealth, they are surrounded by love and hope, like all is not lost where they are. Besides working and studying, they spend most of their time scrolling through social media, consuming content that depicts a life of ease and comfort. For months and months, Musa and Seydou plan their trip meticulously, assuming that once they get to Europe, this is their chance to make it big, like there is no other way. Despite repeated warnings from family, friends, and even at one point, the environment that they live in, it never once occurs to the cousins that they might not even make it to Europe. Initially, they approach their journey with anticipation and excitement, like they can't wait to get started. Not once seriously entertaining the idea that their fantasy is as far from reality as you could possibly get. Throughout their journey, the movie slowly starts to introduce us to this migrant economy individuals and scammers that take advantage of their plight. A huge number of migrants has created a number of entrepreneurial opportunities, ranging from fake passports to slave labor. To make matters worse, these businesses are totally unregulated and therefore free to flourish and thrive in the open. From the start, it's very clear that Musa and Seido are like in over their heads. They are repeatedly scammed and at one point Seydou is sold into slavery. And once you go down this rabbit hole, there's no way out. You're essentially just erased. No one will be able to find you or save you. It's pretty much just lawless. It's a free for all. The film is very, very careful to shed light on their hardship without turning it into trauma porn. We don't actually see the worst of what Musa and Seido go through. However, we do feel it. Like everything about them, you feel just as tired as they do by the end of the film. Despite their trauma, they never lose that initial optimism that got them here in the first place. And it's this optimism that enables them to retain their humanity. The title of the film, Ao Capitano, actually translates into I am the captain, which is an irony since, since they left their home to take control of their life. However, things just got out of control, like beyond their imagination and not in the best way. Towards the end of the movie, Seido and Musa are in a very desperate situation to the point where Seido actually agrees 
to be captain of this boat and steer all these migrants to safety in order to save his cousin's leg. When Sado realizes the gravity of the task in front of him, he immediately wants out, but it's too late because he does not want to be responsible for the men, women, and children who drown if he's unable to properly take care of the ship. And this question of responsibility repeatedly comes up throughout the film. Who is responsible for the dead men, women, and children who drown at sea? The problem is, even if Musa and Sado wanted to go home, they have a gun to their head. Sado has no choice but to steer this boat or he's going to anger these criminals. There is no infrastructure at the moment available that could even facilitate their return. They either have to make it to Italy or die trying. As Captain Sado is burdened with the responsibility of making sure everybody makes it out alive. The movie takes a lot of care to show us who these migrants are, what kind of people would take the risk, and a lot of it are innocent men, women, and children. These criminals that Europeans fear so much are not on these boats. They prey on men, women, and children looking for a better life and facilitate a journey that they really have no interest in helping them complete. Once at sea, migrants are basically at the mercy of God and the Coast Guard. Watching Sado come to the realization slowly that he really is responsible for the ship was absolutely heartbreaking. At one point, Sado decides to call the Coast Guard and assuming their humanity would kick in, assuming that they would have to save them, he waits. He waits and waits and waits and he refuses to steer the ship. And at some point he comes to the realization that the reason that they're stalling is that they hope they drown before they make it to shore. As migrants, Musa and Sado come to the cruel realization that they are invisible. They no longer exist. They are off the map. And I thought this scene, this lack of urgency from the Coast Guard really shows how little these lives are valued and how easily their humanity was erased. The incident inspires Sado to really take control and maintain harmony on the ship. Rather than panic and try to save himself, he prioritizes his passengers and really tries his best to keep to keep an eye out for everyone. Throughout the film, Sado never allows the cruelty of the world to get the better of him. He tries his best to save everyone. However, he can only dream. Despite his best efforts, there's only so much he can do. And I thought the fantasy element of the film really helped emphasize that a lot of these lives lost in the desert, out to sea, could have been prevented. And by the end of the film, you're not really sure where Matteo is going. Like, is this ship going to capsize? Is everyone going to make it? Is this going to be another horrific incident? Miraculously, Sado is actually not only able to make it to Italy, but he makes it out with everyone alive. And at the end, he's screaming, I am the captain, we are alive, as if to say we are not invisible and one way or another, you are going to help us. I think the decision to allow the ship to make it with everyone alive was the right decision. Whenever we do hear about these stories of, this sh of these ships capsizing, it's always these nameless men, women, and children trying to enter a country illegally. And the media is always always emphasizes the illegal part and not the men, women, and children part. If that boat had sunk, Seydou, Musa, as well as everyone on board would have drowned and we would have been heartbroken. And I think the movie does a great job of really tapping into its audience's humanity, into their heart, to really see these individuals as human beings and not their legal status. At the moment, no country wants the responsibility of trying to resolve this migrant issue. And so this economy is just getting bigger and doing a lot better. And again, these criminals that they're so afraid of, they are not on these boats. The biggest propaganda when it comes to migrants is that they're such a curse. They're such a burden when in fact they are a blessing. They can be used as free labor and discarded and even replaced when they are no longer useful. So much hard work is being done by migrants and we see it in the film. They are used to build all kinds of infrastructure. They are repeatedly taken advantage of and only considered a nuisance when they cry for help or ask for their rights. From the movie we can see that migrants come from all walks of life and despite their reasons, it doesn't justify the way they have been treated. And going back to the beginning of the film, Musa and Sado are seduced by this idea of Europe as this beacon of light, as this endless source of opportunity. 
And this is what inspires a lot of these migrants to take the risk because they really feel that whatever awaits them could not possibly be worse than what they have already escaped. And sadly, not only is it worse, it's a total lie. These same values they claim to uphold and really value are manipulated to justify demonizing them and leaving them stranded out to sea. Overall, I highly recommend this film. I think it does a great job of shedding light on the migrant crisis. Musa and Sado again, are seduced by an idea. Prior to their trip, they can't even fathom that there are homeless people in Europe, not because everyone is doing so well, because how could Europe allow such a thing? That's a moral travesty. And I find it ironic that a lot of European countries love to play world police and tell everyone how they should behave and how they should act. And they often demonize the countries that these migrants are coming from, from for having no human rights, for not respecting the rule of law. And then they end up doing the exact same thing. And to make it worse, they, they weaponize a lot of their values and morals to justify doing the same thing. But really, they're two sides of the same coin. And as a result, a lot of dangerous criminals are, are thriving. And I think the film does a great job of really inviting audiences to question their own complicity and how they view these migrants or how they view these situations when they do happen. Like, who is actually responsible for all these dead women, men, women, and children? And whose responsibility is to resolve this issue? And I do think it's like a very complex situation. However, regardless of your legal status, no one deserves to be left out to sea. You guys let me know what you think, and until next time.